We've looked at the evidence of evolution. We've talked about how animals and plants have evolved. Let's talk about primates and human evolution. Well, what is a primate? Primates are a group of mammals that includes lemurs, monkeys, apes, and humans. They come in different sizes and shapes, but they do share common traits. They have rounded heads and flattened faces, unlike other mammals on our planet. And the brain is the largest brain of any land animal, and it's more complex. And the complex brain is reflected by the behaviors and social interactions that these primates do. The majority of primates live in trees, and we call this arboreal. They have adaptations that help them survive there in the trees. Relatively flexible shoulder and hip joints help them climb and swing among the branches. Primate hands and feet are unique. There's digits, fingers, and toes that have nails rather than claws, and the joints are flexible. Primates also have an opposable thumb. Now this enables primates to grasp and cling to objects like branches of a tree. Vision is called binocular vision. That means si simultaneously we can see an object from two points of view, that being both of the eyes. Now this helps primates perceive depth and gauge distances. This helps them jump from tree to tree. In addition to the binocular vision, they can see in color, which aids in depth perception, makes it easier to detect predators, and helps them find ripe fruit. Well, where did primates come from? Well, the similarities among many primates is evidence that they share an evolutionary ancestor. Scientists use fossil evidence, comparative anatomy, genetics, and biochemical studies of modern primates to show how primates are related and how they evolved. And biologists classify primates into two major groups. The first one is Strepsirhines, so that's a big word there, it's pronounced strep sir rhine -ese. And these have large eyes and they're nocturnal, meaning they come out at night. They inhabit the tropical forests of Africa and Southeast Asia. And the earliest fossils of these date back to 50 to 55 million years. The fossils of an organism called the Purgatorius is one of the earliest fossils of these Strepsorhines. It probably resembled a squirrel, and there are no living species of this today, of the Purgatorius. So let's take a look at an example of a Strepsorhine. That's what it would look like. You may have seen this before. That's an example of a Strepsorhine. And here's the Purgatorius that we talked about right here. Right here. They say it probably resembled a squirrel, and because there's not alive today, you're not going to be able to find an actual picture of one, so they have drawn one of what it probably looks like. All right, let's talk about the haplorhines and how human like primates evolve. Now, the haplorhines consist of anthropoids, they include your hominoids, your old and new world monkeys, and hominoids include apes and humans. Now, anthropoids have more complex brains than strepsorhines and have larger skeletal features, which allows a more or less upright posture. Now, what people call monkeys are classified as old or new world monkeys. Now, new world monkeys live in the rainforests of South America and Central America, and all of them are arboreal. They have a long tail which characterizes many of these primates. They use the tail as their fifth limb, grasping and wrapping it around branches as they move from tree to tree. Among the new world monkeys are tiny marmosets and larger spider monkeys. Old world monkeys are larger than the new world monkeys, and they include both arboreal and terrestrial monkeys. So we have some that live in the trees and some that live on the ground. Some of them do both live in the trees and on the ground. Now they do not have tails and they live in environments that range from hot dry savannas of Africa to the cold mountain forest of Japan. Let's take a look at some of the Haplorhines. So here is a Haplorhines. We know it's a Haplorhines because it has the tail. It's hanging out here in the tree with its uh, little baby there. And we know this one is a Haplorhines. It's gone hunting, left the tree to go hunting, but it has a tail here. And we see it's killed some type of animal there to uh, eat. All right, let's talk about some more Haplorhines. Well, hominoids are classified as apes or humans. Now, apes include orangutans, gibbons, chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas. Apes lack tails and have adaptations for climbing trees, like long-muscled forelimbs to climb and swing from tree to tree. So 
they use their muscle forelimbs to climb in the swing from tree to tree, while the other ones use their tails. Now, many apes are arboreal, but also spend a lot of time on the ground. Gorillas, who are the largest of the apes, live in social groups on the ground. Humans have larger brains than apes, and we walk upright all the time. Now, the oldest anthropoid fossils are from Africa and Asia and date back to 37 to 40 million years ago. Anthropoids evolved worldwide. Now, the oldest monkey fossils are of New World monkeys dating back 30 to 35 million years ago. They evolved independently of Old World monkeys, but share a common ancestor with Old World monkeys because of geological isolation. Now, Old World monkeys evolved more recently than New World monkeys. And this is because the Old World monkey fossils are only about 20 to 22 million years old, while you look at the New World monkeys, which date back 30 to 35 million years ago. Hominoids evolved in Asia and Africa. According to the fossil record, there was a global cooling when hominoids evolved. Changes in vegetation, such as grass, occurred, and during that time, Old World monkeys became adapted to the cooling. Gibbons were probably the first to evolve, and orangutans were the second to evolve. They were followed by African apes, gorillas, and chimpanzees. Molecular data, meaning the DNA, shows that chimpanzees share the closest common ancestor with humans human ancestry. Well, some scientists propose that between 5 and 8 million years ago in Africa, a population that was the ancestor to chimpanzee and humans diverged into two lines, meaning they split apart. One line evolved into chimpanzees and the other into humans. These two lines are called hominoids, primates that can walk upright on two legs. And because we diverged into two lines from an ancestor, that's why the DNA is very similar. That's why we're classified as cousins. Now, there aren't a lot of fossils to support this, but DNA, however, does. The diversion happened in response to environmental changes. Some had to leave the tree to find food, and being on the ground, it was more beneficial to be bipedal, meaning to walk on two legs. Hominoids are bipedal primates that include modern humans and their direct ancestors. Hominoids who walked upright were able to survive much more successfully on the ground, so they loved the trees. Now, the fossil record is incomplete, but more hominoid fossils are found every year. And when we see those hominoid fossils, the fossils show the skull and brain capacity of these early hominoids. Well, Raymond Dart discovered a skull of a young hominoid that had features of an ape and human. He saw that the opening in the skull through which the brainstem passes, known as the foramen magnum, was located on the bottom of the skull, which is not shown on ape skulls. He classified the organism as Australopithecus africanus, which means southern ape from Africa. It has been dated between 2.5 and 2.8 million years old. Paleoanthropologists, which are scientists studying human fossils, have recovered even more Australopithecine specimens. They describe them as an early hominoid that lived in Africa, possessing both ape and human characteristics. So it's not just Raymond Dart who has discovered it. It's not just one they've discovered. It's a multitude of fossils that they have recovered and ones that they have found and studied. Lucy was discovered in 1974 in one of the most complete Australopithecine skeletons. Radiometric dating shows that Lucy lived about 3.2 million years ago. Donald Johansson found Lucy and proposed that the skeleton was a new species that lived about 3 to 4 million years ago, Australopithecus afarensis. The structure of the pelvis indicates they walked upright like humans, but the brain case suggests their brains had a small ape-like volume and was not larger than a human brain. The fossil record shows they lived no longer than 25 years and probably lived in trees until they moved to the ground to travel. They most likely lived in small groups. There have been three other species found in South Africa and East Africa dating back 2.5 to 4.3 million years ago. They are grouped into the genus Peranthropus because their fossils suggest they had larger teeth and jaw and sturdier bodies than the Australopithecines. They are extinct now, but some scientists think they were ancestral to modern humans. Neanderthal or Neanderthal 
This doesn't come up a lot, but it needs to be addressed. Now, Neanderthal is German for Neander Valley, where the first Neanderthal fossil was found in 1856. Now, there is no TH like th pronunciation in German. It is pronounced Neanderthal and not Neanderthal. It has been spelled Neander with the T-H-A-L, so it's been spelled like Neanderthal, but in 1904, the spelling was changed to match the phonetics, and the spelling was changed to Neanderthal with the T-A-L. It is pronounced Neanderthal, not Neanderthal. Now, in 1964, Lewis and Mary Leakey found skull portions belonging to another type of hominoid. The Leakey saw it had a larger brain case, smaller teeth and jaws, and similar structures to modern humans. They called it Homo habilis, which means handy human. They said they were handy because they used tools. Radiometric dating shows they lived 1.5 and 2.5 million years ago and made stone tools. The tools could show that Homo habilis, the handy human, may have been scavengers and used the tools to cut meat from carcasses that had been killed by other animals. 1.5 to 1.8 million years ago, there was Homus erectus, and there are some sites which suggest they hunted also. They also found hearths, which suggest they used fire and lived in caves. So more human-looking hominoids might have arisen before Homo erectus disappeared. Homo sapiens, which is us, emerged about 100 to 500,000 years ago. We did not live with the dinosaurs. We did not evolve from Neanderthals. Now, Neanderthals lived about 35,000 to 100,000 years ago, and they hunted, they had burial grounds, and may have had religious views, and they spoke through languages. Many similarities to us, but we did not evolve from Neanderthals. Well, what happened to Neanderthals? We'll talk about that in just a moment. Well, what about us? Well, we evolved from Cro-Magnons, who are identical to modern humans in height, skull structure, tooth structure, and brain size. That's how we know we came from Cro-Magnons. We're almost identical to them. They used tools, they were artists, and probably used language based on a bulge in the skull that corresponds to the area of the brain that uses language. Now, Neanderthals did not evolve into Cro-Magnons. They died out. The fossil evidence suggests that these Neanderthals were sister species of Homo sapiens. Humans, modern humans, probably first established themselves in Africa, Europe, and Asia. They then crossed into North America by sea or using a land bridge, which is how they got to North America, Central America, South America, and all the other continents. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to post a comment below. You can also email me. And uh, that's it for the Evolutionary Unit. We'll see you guys next week when we start classification.